What you're about to watch contains explicit language, adult themes, violence, and may not be suitable for viewers under 18. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Hello, welcome to the special report, your news and views program about geek gaming culture on the internet. Coming up in the show today, Nolan Bushnell, probably one of the de facto pioneers in the video game industry, was scheduled to receive the GDC Pioneer Award, but will no longer get that award after accusations of sexual misconduct come about. There's a lot to unpack, and we're going to try to get to everything and look at all sides of this story. My name is JD Shadow, and the special report starts now. Nolan Bushnell, who, if you know anything about the games industry, you probably know something about who he is. He was instrumental in creating Pong, probably one of the first video games that went out to the mass market, and we all know his history with Atari. Apparently, he was going to be the recipient of something called the Pioneer Award at the Game Developer Conference which according to the GDC website is celebrating those individuals who developed a breakthrough technology, game concept, or gameplay design at a crucial juncture in video game history, paving the way for the Myrads who followed them. If you had known anything, you probably understand that Nolan Bushnell could qualify for all of those things. Being one of the founding fathers of Atari, as we said, and of course Pong, and paving the way for a lot of other people to come into the fold. Well, that particular award has now been rescinded, and it's because of the social media movement known as Me Too. You probably know what this is all about by now. And it is empowering toward women, but at the same time, it has gotten its critics and has gotten pretty controversial in its time. We can all go and ask Assad Asari for how controversial it could be. Nolan Burst now has seen his chances of getting the Pioneer Award be rescinded because of actions that were partake in his time with Atari. According to The Guardian, and this is The Guardian, so take it for what it's worth, the decision to give Nolan Bushnell the Pioneer Award was rescinded as, according to The Guardian, news provoked an outcry on social media as games industry members pointed to examples of Atari sexist culture. According to Steve Kent, the author of Ultimate History of Video Games, Atari employee Al Acorn remember Bushnell holding company meetings in a hot tub and attempted to coax a female employee to join him. Acorn recalled Nolan needed some papers and documents so he called his office and said have Miss So-and-so bring him up. We were in the tub when she arrived so he proceeded to try to get her in the tub during the board meeting. He also said in a Playboy profile of Atari that prototype machines were named after attractive female employees with a home version of Pong codenamed Darling after an employee who was that and had the tiniest waist. He said that in a 2012 Playboy profile. And also when Ray Kassar, when speaking to Tristan Donovan for a video game history book, he was quoted as saying, I arrived at Atari on the first day, I was dressed in a business suit and a tie, and met Nolan Bush now, he had a t-shirt on, the t-shirt said, I love to explicative, that was my introduction to Atari. And when this all came out, and keep in mind that this was Tuesday that the GDC had announced that they were going to do this, some people were rather annoyed. Game designer Elizabeth Sampit wrote, quote, This is not the year to feed a man who pressured female employees to do topless hot top parties and codename Pong after the hottest woman in the office. A few other people follow suit using the hashtag NotNolan, which is another hashtag that people use to express their displeasure. Gillian Smith, one of those people, said, While other industries are distancing themselves from the abusive and sexist behavior of powerful men, GDC is giving a pioneer award to one of them. I only hope UBM reverses their decision to honor Nolan Bushnell, whose sexually harassing behavior is well documented. And according to The Verge, GDC organizers said they initially did not know about Atari's quote-unquote sexist culture, promising to look at them more closely. On Wednesday, they made their decision. 
saying, quote, the Game Developers Choice Awards Advisory Committee who vote on the special award winners for each show have made the decision not to give out a Pioneer Award for this year's event, following additional feedback from the community. They believe their picks should reflect the values of today's games industry and will dedicate this year's award to honor the pioneering and unheard voices of the past. Now, there has been some people who have came to the defense of Nolan Bush now, and we'll get to one who spoke rather bluntly about what she thought was going on at Atari. Because there have been people who have said that the people who are speaking up against Nolan Bush now, now were never actually at Atari or knew anything about what was going on inside the offices at Atari at that point in time. However, before we get to that, Nolan Bushnell then put out his own statement, and I don't know if he should have did this at least not right away because of who is coming out in defense of him. But he has said that he apologizes for those people who he had offended and applauded the decision by the GDC. Saying in a statement to a Twitter, quote, I applaud the GDC for ensuring that their institution reflects what is right, specifically with regards to how people should be treated in the workplace. And if that means an award is the price I have to pay personally so the whole industry may be more aware and sensitive to these issues, I applaud that too. If my personal actions or the actions of anyone who ever worked with me offended or caused pain to anyone at our companies, then I apologize without reservation. Now, of course, we all know what the B2 movement is, and I said something about Azar Azari. That is something that has taken the Me Too movement and made it a little bit controversial because of the fear that some people will actually use that movement in order to just get at some men that they do not like and claim that something that happened when it never did. The matter of due process has to some people have been lost in the wake of some of these accusations and we talk about Azar Azari as being the poster child as to when this kind of gets a little murky. One of the people who has decided to speak out for Nolan Bushnell, however, is somebody by the name of Lonnie Reeder, who posted a huge thing on the Atari Museum Facebook page. We're not going to go into every single thing, but she said, quote, So let's take a step back and look at the overall situation. It started with a 38-year-old disgruntled uber-feminist woman games designer from Massachusetts running for Congress who had a less-than-stellar experience in the predominantly male-dominated video game space. Using the Me Too movement and a moment in time for which she had no first-hand knowledge and with zero complaints lodged against Nolan or complaints about the work culture by employees working at Atari during that time. And based on archival newspaper and magazine interviews with Nolan and other chatting about a work environment, time, and culture that existed 40 years ago. A work environment everyone, men and women, happily worked in together and partied in together or a dating party in, there was no pressure and no judgment, an environment that had resulted in decades-long friendships, marriage, little Otarians, business partnerships, and frequent reunions, providing us with amazing memories and for most of us, spending the rest of our work careers attempting to replicate the magic of the Camelot that we were lucky enough to work at. She goes on to say, quote, Atari was a large corporation with many facilities. I worked in corporate headquarters, interfaced with every department in the company as part of communications, security, and facility groups. Then being adopted by the coin-op and industrial design groups, I also spent a great deal of time in the engineering hot tub buildings, which would be two locations where most of the fun and craziness occurred. From my vantage point and having the first person perspective at this time and the Atari environment, what has been done to Nolan is falsely mischaracterizing him for a lifestyle that did no harm or wrong to anyone. Nolan created a company environment which opened the doors for many women into a field where they were never included before. High tech, Nolan never discriminated on any level and gave everyone a chance to prove on their own merits that they could be a part of Atari. From soldering boards to building arcade cabinets, drawing schematics and artwork to working on the assembly line. For me personally, Nolan was the final word in me being hired at Atari, my first full-time job after college. He continued his belief in me 
years later, we co-founded U-Wink in Los Angeles where I became equally compensated vice president. Nolan never profiled a person by their gender as to whether or not they were a fit for the job. He based his decision on the person's skill, ability, and passion for the job. Because of that belief, we always rose to the occasion. We were a bonded teamship and a family. Atari also saw a woman, the amazing Carol Shaw, go on to fame. For me, and I'm sure for other women who will weigh in, while this feminazi congresswoman wannabe may believe she is doing Atari woman kind of favor, in reality, she has done us a disservice by creating victims where there were none. Personally, I am extremely angered by her words and conduct in this matter, not just for Nolan, but for the women of Atari, all of us. We all were, and remain to this day, extremely strong and intelligent women. And there isn't any man who would dare take advantage of us, not if they intended to procreate in the future. My other anger is a callous and unnecessary hurt I'm sure this matter has inflicted on Nancy and their kids and grandkids. Finally, by not doing their due diligence before terminating their honor, the GDC did a disservice to Nolan, to my fellow Atarians, and to the truth. Dolan was extremely gracious in this matter via his tweet. Hopefully the GDC will right this misstep on their part at some point in the future. And to put this into context, Lonnie Reader is somebody who could be considered a Democrat. She is fully in opposition to Donald Trump if you want to take that into account. And the congresswoman wannabe that she's referring to is Brianna Wu. The person who had claimed that she was being harassed by those people who turned against her for her political beliefs. Though the FBI did conclude that she was never in any real danger as a result of claimed death threats leveled against her. Okay, so let's unpack everything that we just heard by this. First things first, I applaud those women who choose to speak out for the cases like Harvey Weinstein or the cases like Kevin Spacey or those kinds of people, those type of men who thought it was good to just keep doing what they were doing, to just barge into people's homes and just like start assaulting them in a sexual manner or whatever else. That is completely uncalled for and that should be the exception not to rule. And that is the exception not to rule. But the one thing that you really have to be careful of is that you must take both sides into account. You must take all sides. You must let the man have his due process. You must be able to use the trust but verify method of handling these situations. Because what if you are wrong in taking that account into account as a absolute fact? What if you are wrong in that sense? What if the woman is lying? What if she is just trying to ruin a man's career or life or whatever? What if you are wrong in that sense? Remember, these are just accusations. Stuff like Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey, those were proven fact. People corroborated stories. Everybody knew that that was something that had happened. But when you get into Azari Azari or the current situation that WWE has with Enzo Amore, where some of the stuff that the woman who claims that he sexually assaulted her is a little suspect, you kind of get an understanding of why people are a little bit squeamish about this right now. One, it makes men scared to approach a woman and compliment her appearance. Because what is the tipping point? What is the line that you cross? Is it way too narrow of a line? Is it way too narrow of a space on the other side of that line? And we're seeing that more and more. Is that the wrong kind of way to use the hashtag is starting to show itself. And it's devaluing the hashtag itself. It's devaluing all those other women who came forward against men who really were sexually harassing people. Who really were pushing for this kind of lifestyle. For this kind of behavior. And they don't know what they're doing or they know they're doing it. And they feel proud that they're taking advantage of this. They don't know what they're doing to the other women. Or they just don't care what they're doing to the other women. And now we're seeing that, wait a minute, we need to have due process in these sort of cases. Now that doesn't mean that the judges or juries are going to get everything exactly correct. They're only human. They're going to make mistakes. Or hey, a man is only human. He's going to make mistakes sooner or later. 
but you have to be very careful in these sort of accusations because these things can be very damning, even if there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever. That might not matter to some people. That might not matter to those people who choose to ruin a person's life by doing something that the majority of people are going to side with the woman on. And some of them will take advantage of that. And unfortunately, that's just the nature of it. And the notion that somebody, anybody, would use this very serious matter in order to get back at somebody because they had a bad date with that person. That is deplorable. That should never happen. And yet it is happening and this is something that we have to be very careful about. Especially when we talk about things like Nolan Bushnell and this whole case. Here's the thing that I saw with this. With the hot tub thing, even if that actually did happen, even if there was something about that like, oh, you're coaxing a female to get into the hot tub with you, did he force her to do that? Did he actually say, hey, you had to do this or else you're fired? There was no evidence that that ever happened. There was absolutely no evidence that that happened. Of course, there was evidence to suspect that he requested that the female join him but there was never any pushback for her saying no or there was never any real evidence that he forced her to do anything like that so in that sense if he took no as no then I don't know where the problem would lie there and I don't take that as Nolan Bushnell trying to sexually harass or sexually assault somebody I take that as Nolan Bushnell saying hey come join us in this freestyle way of doing business you're invited, but no one's going to think any less of you if you go and say no to it. From what I see, the reasons why they believe that he should not be a recipient of this award is blasphemy. I do believe he deserves that award. I do believe that he deserves every award that he has coming to him. And the fact of the matter that some people who were not in Atari at that point in time, who were never there, trying to take outside accounts and believe that it's because of that, that they know the entire story of what exactly happened. And for some of these news outlets to say, hey, it's because of this that we're going to take someone's side without knowing anything ourselves, without doing any research whatsoever, and to have our own political agendas to have absolutely nothing to do with what actually happened, or don't really care about the feelings of the women who were actually there when this stuff happened, that is also pretty deplorable. Do not muddy the water and make it harder for women who would actually harass and assault it like this to be able to have a voice because you are using it for ways it should never be used. Plus, here's the other thing, and this is something that I believe we need to really address. Even if you think, okay, this is not right, he should have never did this hot tub thing or called machines after sexy women, which to me, that is a tame offense. Why would you care about that? If he wants to do that, that's his right to do that. I mean, it's not something I would do, but did it hurt anybody? Is it something that at the end of the day you're going to lose sleep over? I don't think that's something that is worth losing sleep over. If you're complaining about that, I really need to tell you about some things you might want to care about a little bit more than that. But the other thing here is that even if you think those are deplorable, here's the thing. This is something that occurred 40 years ago. This stuff that happened in the 1970s and early 80s. This is something that since then we've become more conscious about. This is something we've, in the end of the day, become more aware about. And not only have times changed, and yeah, we know that's the culture of it back in the day. Everybody has their opinion about the validity of that kind of excuse. But here's the other thing. People change. People get smarter, you would think people will change and they say you know what that was stupid some of the things we did back then that was stupid what i said back then that was something that at the end of the day maybe i shouldn't have said and maybe i've become a better person and maybe now if he was there now he would have never have did any sort of corporate meetings inside a hot tub but we learn from our mistakes. You would think people will learn from their mistakes. And we become better people because of those mistakes. We become better people because we learn from those mistakes. 
And if you're going to always, always, always hold people to those mistakes and never try to forgive them for their mistakes, of course, they got work in order to gain that forgiveness. But if you never even try to see that maybe they're trying to become better people, we're never going to get anywhere. But here's the other thing about this. This has nothing to do with how long it took for them to see it or how long it takes for somebody to forgive people. They have no interest. The people who Lonnie Reader was describing have absolutely no interest in letting Nolan Bush know forget the past because this is about something much more than this. This is about a war that they have waged against some people in the video game industry for quite a while now. And it's because either they didn't get the reviews that they were hoping to get through the general public and they instead went to their friends in the media or they tried to be authoritarian or whatever else and they became militant about it. The fact of the matter is that this is a war that they want. They are hoping that they get this response. They were hoping that the GDC, somebody who, by the way, has caved in the past and has brought people on like Tim Schafer, who, by the way, is getting the Lifetime Achievement Award this year at their conference, Somebody who made a snide comment in 2015, which we still haven't seen any kind of apology for, and then he goes uses a block list. By the way, I'm blocked by him on Twitter, by the way. I don't know why that is. I've tried to figure out what's going on with that, and yeah, he still got me blocked for whatever reason. But the fact of the matter is that they will never forgive Nolan Bush now, because that is going against their agenda. It is damning for us people on the progressive side to see this happen because it is tearing the progressive side apart like it is. But the people who need to hear it are just not listening or don't care because of whatever it is. And we're trying to still figure out what is it that has to be said in order to get them to see the error of this kind of militant attitude. And in this case, in this whole thing with Nolan Bush now, 40 years, that doesn't matter to him. It could be any amount of time. It could be any amount of years since something like that happened. It could be anything at all. Now, again, we're not talking about Harvey Weinstein. We're not about Matt Lauer. We're not talking about Kevin Spacey or anything like that who continued to continue to have this sort of behavior and probably still would have that behavior to this day. We're talking about something that could be considered mild. We're talking about Ara Zari type mild. We're talking about hot tubs. We're talking about naming a computer after another person. That is not striking to me as somebody who is pushing someone to have sex with them. And to see people who have this attitude that no apology is ever going to be good enough. No amount of time is ever going to be enough time to heal the wounds. When somebody chooses to throw salt on their own wound to just make it hurt more and to always be militant and to never forgive and to never have a sympathetic forgiving bone in their body. That to me is something and I know that I've had problems with that too and I know people in my personal life and in my online life that have that sort of problem as well through no fault of their own or through things that maybe they can't control, but these people can control it. And for those people to never be able to forgive somebody because it goes against the political purpose they have that wound for is something that is going to drive everybody away from them. They don't want to be a part of that. This is why we ended up seeing Donald Trump as president. It wasn't just because Hillary Clinton was the most corrupt politician we had in a while. It was because of this militant left position. This is because people don't want to be associated with people who their only recourse is to issue death threats or bomb threats or whatever else. They don't want to be a part of that. Yes, they want to be a part of the left wing. Yes, they want to be a part of the progressive side. But if you never give them a chance of redemption, if you never 
give somebody who sees the error in their ways a chance of redemption and say, oh, you did this back in the day, you did this 10 years ago or 20 or 30 years ago, you're not welcome back, they're trying to make amends, then you know what? They're just going to go to some place that they are accepted. And where is that? That's going to be the right wing. That's going to be hate groups. That's going to be neo-Nazi groups. That's going to be the quote-unquote alt-right. And many people have different opinions of what that means. It's going to be those kinds of people. And that's going to just make that side stronger. you got to stop that. People got to stop doing that. They've got to at least try to give somebody a chance that they want to make amends. Give them a chance. Give that person a second chance. Give them a opportunity to reconcile. Give them an opportunity to be a good person. Give them a chance to make up for their misdeeds. Because remember, people are saying, oh, this will never change. Our apology will never change what you did to me. No, it's going to take time travel to, to take away what somebody probably did to you. But you know what? Let a person try to make it so that the future doesn't repeat the past. Let them try to make sure that they don't repeat the same mistake. If you're telling them to try to change the past, then you're going to be very disappointed. You're always going to have that hurt. You're always going to have that sort of memory with you. But if you try to move past it, if you try to say, okay, we can reconcile. Yes, we can try to make this work. We can try to be friends. We can try to separate the good with the bad. And we can recognize that you were a founder of a lot of different things in the games industry, including Atari. If it wasn't for you, many of us would not even be here right now. We would not be here making games and talking about games or discussing you. And yes, the mentality that Atari was to party hard. Sometimes that includes autubs. That nobody who was even at Atari would say that they felt uncomfortable at. And if you even listen to Lonnie Reader or any of these other people who have came out and spoken on behalf of Nolan, maybe you would understand that or maybe you choose not to understand it because it goes right against what you think you want to do. Being militant is going to get us nowhere here and I do believe that they robbed Nolan of this award that he deserves to get and I would call on the GDC and not holding my breath because I understand how the game developer conference has been in recent years when they've talked about these sort of issues, but maybe on this one thing, perhaps it wasn't a good thing for Nolan to make a statement like he did because there's a lot of people who would stand for him and he was Ara Azarid in this whole thing. That's what I think happened. He was Ara Azarid and the more people get Azara Azarid, the more we see that the Me Too movement will go away from what it's supposed to be, which is a way for women to have power against those men who have chosen to think that women are nothing more than playthings or sex toys, and toward a more militant way where it is a weapon for militant extremists and authoritarians to try to destroy lives because they don't like a person or they don't think a person is deserving of a certain award. Nolan Bushnell deserves this award. Hopefully they change their mind about this. And in my mind and then probably in the minds of everybody who is my subscribers and watching this, no doubt Nolan Bushnell is a pioneer in our books. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Special Report. Thank you again for watching. What are your thoughts about the whole situation with Nolan Bushnell and the GDC? What do you think should happen? Do you think that he was wrong with the hot tubs and all of that other stuff? Do you think that they are right in rescinding that award? Do you think that he is a pioneer? Let me know in the comment section down below. I love to read you guys' comments. And if you haven't yet, please be sure to hit subscribe and hit like on this video. You know this is probably going to get demonetized because, you know, YouTube. But that does help me out a great deal and gets more eyeballs to my content. So please do all of that and I will see you again for the next special report or whatever comes before that. Until then, my name is JD Shadow and that just happened.